On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we'll be far removed from anything even remotely close to saltwater. Harry, Vernon, and I are heading to Minnesota's Lake Mille Lacs. Completely out of our comfort zone, we'll attempt our first ever shot at ice fishing. Grab a blanket and a hot cup of coffee and get ready for this out of the ordinary episode. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Well, how this unique adventure started, uh, as unique adventures normally start that involve me, Harry Vernon has something to do with it. He was saying, all the shows we've done, why don't we do something totally out of our elements? I don't know if I saw this Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, but I saw some people ice fishing and said, you know, this would be a really cool thing to try to do something different and look different differently at types of fishing that people do. So I would just shrug him off and he kept at it. And so I know the right person, the perfect person, Rapala, longtime show sponsor, Dan Quinn. I call him up, Dan. Black Lake is one of the most iconic walleye fisheries in the world. It's one of the greatest lakes for walleyes, perch, bass, muskies, pike, all sorts of our Midwestern fish up here. In the summertime, you're out in a boat, but in the wintertime, it freezes solid. It's a whole different adventure. You gotta drill holes in the ice to catch the fish, but um, yeah, it's an iconic lake that has a lot of, lot of rich history in Minnesota. We're gonna fish Minnesota's Lake Mille Lacs, and we're going. Got to the airport, got on the plane, and it was about a three hour nonstop flight. We're coming down for a landing, so I'm sitting in the window seat and I look down, I see all this white. And it was uh, pretty impressive. I didn't know what to think. I said, it's white. There's a lot of snow. We land, we're waiting on Dan Quinn to pick us up. Our bags arrived, met Dan, threw everything in his truck and took about a two and a half hour ride to uh, Nitty's Hunters Point Resort. And this is where the adventure really started. So the east side is a, is a, is a side of the lake rich with, uh, with structure and tons of great fishing for just about every type of fish in the lake. They're, they're very accessible from this side of the lake, so it's a, it's a hot spot for me. I haven't been this cold since I took a cold shower, and this, is, this, is, this was cold. So it was kind of pretty neat experience right off the bat. Up in this area, when, it's, when it freezes solid, you're limited on what you can do. You can ski, you can snowmobile, do things, but ice fishing is incredibly popular. It's, it would be unusual to meet someone who doesn't ice fish almost. As soon as we got here, Dan said, let's go get your stuff together. And uh, as you're driving out, you're getting in this lake and all you see is almost like a whiteout. You just see snow everywhere. Then you come upon these street signs and you're following these street signs in this truck to get to these two fish shanties or fish shacks that they had set for us. I think I've lost my mind. Finally, we go into these things, and the first thing is like, I'm impressed. I said, look at this. You have television. There's uh, refrigerators, not that you needed that. Um, couch, pull-out beds, the whole thing. You could cook in there, everything. And the thing that really got me, I'm looking at these manhole covers in the uh, floor. And there, I don't know, might have been maybe eight of them or so. And Dan pulls out one, and there these pre-drilled holes through the lake. And he said, let's get some fishing done. I said, okay, how's this gonna work? We had these Lawrence Elite Active Imaging units. Dan opens up one of these holes and he puts his transducer down and he activates the Lawrence. And you could see not only straight down, but anywhere around in proximity under that hole. I'm telling you, it's, it's one of the most effective tools to catch more fish that, that I've ever seen happen in the fishing industry. As far as, instead of just straight up and down, you have to try to drill a lot of holes. You could drill one hole, put this down, and scan all the way around about 120 feet around you, and you can see the fish. So if there's a fish over here, you go and drill a hole over there. And then 
Once you get near the fish, you switch into the down view mode and it's shooting down and it's, it's a big slice. You can see 60 feet around you and you can watch the fish interact with your bait. You can you quickly learn about the fish behavior, how they interact with your baits. It's, it's a real eye opener and it's definitely changed ice fishing. And it's an experience that I think everybody should try at least once. And, and man, it, it was pretty cool. Definitely an experience to, just to start out with. Then we went on after that. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. After settling in and getting the tutorial on active imaging by Lawrence, Harry Vernon and I set forth to give this ice fishing thing a try. We're on Minnesota's Lake Mille Lacs with Dan Quinn. So Dan, no doubt, has a home field advantage. We're on the couch fishing. Dan's over there catching fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you got a walleye. walleye. Check that out. He's not quite a wall hanger, but it's a wall hey, it's a start. He had the right attitude. Look at that. Well, I saw the rod band and it sounded pretty good. <laughs> cool. Heck yeah. We'll take it. You're starting to bite. But a six pound 832 is a standard standard line and then connecting that to a six pound fluorocarbon leader, maybe three, four, five feet. And then a snap swivel on the end of that. And then you can, you're able to change from little spoons to little jiggy wraps to little ripping wraps. So there's a variety of little lures, but um, yeah, that's it's a pretty simple setup, about a two and a half to three foot rod, the six pound line, and then you attach a minnow head to the to the treble on the spoons and um that's yeah, a pretty straightforward way to fish now is that a keeper it is not a keeper no nope, but i've got one down there right now that's oh yeah it's a nice one. Oh yeah a nice walleye oh yeah there we go I gotta get a spill picture. That that is around. They're still on. There's our buddy. Look, He's been there. messing with us. 19. Oh, I gotta go back. But just a great, good walleye. Wow. There he goes. <laughs> cool. All right. Awesome. We wrapped it up, and uh, something intriguing happened that would later come into play that night, more specifically over in the fish shack of Harry and Dan's. Now, we flew all day. It's tired, tired. We get out to the shanty. I'm pretty exhausted. It's like, wow, it's time to go to bed. Oh, no. Dan's got to pull out this gravel sounding reel out of nowhere. I go, what's this? He goes, well, we fish at night too. And I was like, oh, all right, we'll just put the bait down. When you hear this, the, the gravel turning, that means you got a bite, you got a hand line to fish. So I'm like, well, all right, well, it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm laying there and all of a sudden here's, I jump out of bed, I'm like, oh my God. All right, here we go. Late night fishing. Put these down lines in the hole here. And every once in a while, you get a bite in the middle of the night. It could be two o'clock, I don't know what time it is, but we got this little guy here. It happened, I got, I was able to, to get one up. It was nice, a very nice walleye for me, for, for my first walleye ever. And it was pretty cool. Then next to you know it, Dan puts a fresh bait down. Within probably 30 seconds, he gets one on. Get a little I, blurry. Oh yeah. Oh, oh there we oh, go. Whoa. Oh, oh there yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah. That's a little better. That's a lot better. Look at that bad boy, man. Ooh, there's some lax gold. Inside the shanty, chilling out here. Wake up for one like that. Oh, heck yeah. Look at that. We just dropped it down, caught the little one, dropped that one back down. Look at that. So fortunately, we had a good night's sleep in hours because nothing ate. 
the downrigger, whatever you want to call that thing. It didn't go off. In the morning we pull up, there's the minnow, still lively. So it was a slow night for us. So it, again, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. I, I enjoyed every bit of it. But that night, Dan Quinn uh, scored the keeper because they have very strict slot limits here. We would later have that for a big fish fry along with the perch that Dan wanted us to catch back at Nitty's uh, Hunters Point Resort. The walleye is the largest member of the perch family. Its name is derived from the reflective layer of pigment over its eyes, which helps it see and feed in low light and murky conditions. It's fond of gravel shoal bottoms, indicative of Mille Lacs and several other Minnesota lakes. The species is highly desired as table fare and a huge economic contributor to the freshwater recreational fishing industry. Walleye prey heavily on yellow perch, but are also willing strikers of lures. In ArtByPasta.com, from Catch to Canvas, rendering. Catch to Canvas, baby. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products. Blending technology with performance since 1973. George, we'll be right back. Snowmobiles, portable heaters, and pop-up tents. This ain't the Florida Keys. Harry Vernon and I now find ourselves heading far out onto Minnesota's frozen Lake Mille Lacs. We're fishing with Rapala's Dan Quinn. The next day, uh, definitely different. We were gonna come out of the fish shacks, nice comfortable 72 degree fish shacks. And Dan had another treat. He said some of these fish have moved off to a certain type of bottom. It's about halfway into this lake. He said, but no problem, we have snowmobiles. Now we're going in a snowmobile. I said, man, I don't know a snowmobile. What the heck's going on here? So we jump on the snowmobiles. We go all the way out, probably about four miles out to the middle of the lake. After a brisk ride and Dan's crew preparing for our adventure, we arrived at base camp. How we doing? I think we're in the North Pole and I need to speak with Santa. i tell you what, that was one heck of a cool but freezing ride. And set up a nice little tent, got a little heater in the tent, and some more holes drilled out in the ice. And it's pretty cool drilling the holes. I'm not going to lie there either. Now that's a hole. Woo! Now that's a hole. <laughs> so drill the holes. Again, we've got our Lawrence fish binders down there, and man, the fish are just all over, all over it. And so they put us on a really hot spot. We're catching these perch like one after another, one after a couple walleyes. Get the gaff, get the gaff. Whoa, perch. Mm. It's fat too. Oh. 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 Oh, you're taking me down. Oh, look at this guy. Gaff? Give me a gaff. Oh, wait. No, never mind. Let's not discuss gaffs, please. Come on. Where's he at? Oh, oh. Yo. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Little jigs. Hold up, state cook, bro. So Dan had this big fish fry lined up. So he says, you're going to get a lot of perch out here. Keep the perch. With a bucket of perch and several small walleye releases to our credit, Harry Vernon tops the trip by catching a lunker of a perch. You need a hand? I might. Whoa! Oh, wow. So that's a big perch. perch. Oh, yeah, grab That's a turbo thing. perch. Hang on. Tur turbo perch. Oh, yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a triple Whoa. indie, baby. That's Woo! And I stroked them all. I got the biggest perch of all of them. I got a 14-inch perch, which was pretty awesome. And they, everybody was excited, so I knew that I did accomplish something crazy. And they asked me how, how I did it, and I just told them it was a triple lindy, and I, I kept it at that. I didn't tell them what I did, because then they ended up doing the same thing and catching a bigger one. I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> George, we'll be right back. George, Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by 
the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. VMC, your expert in hooks. Art by Pasta, real life art. Visit artbypasta.com. I know this is a saltwater show, but uh, fortunately at the bitter end, we were able to salvage the saltwater theme of our show, as weird as it may sound. We're fishing down there. The active imaging, Lawrence has shown his big blob. We think, okay, here comes another fish working up. You try to lift that jig up a little bit off the bottom, the blob comes up, and this time it eats. And I'm hooked up this time. And all of a sudden, George hooks up to, to the big fish. Look at the Lorenz. There's fish down there all around our baits. Oh, man. Oh, I, well, I'm, I on, I'm, on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Oh, you got it. There you go. That's a nice, George. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's that's a good one. I don't know. You know what? That's a good one, you George. Know, you know, what it almost feels like, it's like a, it's it's like, it feels like it's fighting like a mommy. No way. No way. No, oh, look geez. at this. Are you kidding? Oh, nice. Are you kidding? Oh, that, he did. George. Oh, cow! Oh! Oh, there goes the angle. Ah, look at this oh, guy! Oh, I, that, well, no that's way! That's the neatest thing that it tell you? Oh, where? Harry, it feels like it's fighting like a mahi. It, Did it, I say that? 100%. You know what? We need to fillet this guy and put him on ice. He just fighting this fish, fighting this fish, and I man, I walk over to find out what's going on. All of a sudden, out of this hole, a mahi mahi, a dolphin. I'm like, we're in the first mahi dolphin ever caught in Mill Lakes, ever. It was unbelievable. So it was coming to the end of the trip. We laid out all our catch on the ice that we were gonna take back for the fish fry, and, and the mahi was in there too. So it was really a, a, a bizarre ending to it, but sometimes when you bring that South Florida luck and techniques up here, and somebody once said that fish have tails. They know no boundary, there are no fences in the ocean. And somehow this fish knew that formula and ended up where it ended up. Okay, well, Harry and I, or look at what I fondly called jet skis for most of the trip, but there were snowmobiles. So we asked Dan permission if we could take these jet skis and you know, and if we wrecked one to demolish them, jet skis, there I go again. Snowmobiles. Harry and I had to have a go on the ice and just drive them around until we finally got out of our system. And that was a lot of fun. Time to pack it up, head all the way back. Harry said something about trying to walk. It's a long, it's a four mile walk. I said, that's nothing. You know, two old guys, that's like a piece of cake. So I said, let's just walk back. And George said, yeah, let's go for it. So after a long day of fishing, him and I just said, let's pack it up and start walking. And we just went on home. It was a nice day. You, you spent a lot of time on the ice. What an adventure. We're back over at, um, at Nitty's Hunter's Point Resort. We got our cabins now for the night, and we met up at the restaurant. And they were surprised at that restaurant when we walked in with the mahi. They were, so, they were shocked. They want to know what in the heck is that. I, Anybody got a weigh scale? You like record mahi? Who's caught one bigger? That's all I want to know. So hopefully they'll put it up on their wall. It was pretty cool. We'll and, re and remember, since Lake Rick and Bahi, if you all want to buy us beer, we're open to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fish fry was sensational. They dropped, I don't know, two platters of fish off, and it was incredible. Perch, unreal. Uh, the walleye, spectacular. Just a company sitting around and enjoying and talking about what we just accomplished, which was so bizarre. I kept saying this whole thing of the ice fishing. We fished up north before striped bass and it's snowing lightly and that, no big deal. But to do this crazy element like that, I had no grasp upon it. It just felt to me like I was in an episode of a twilight zone. That's how odd it was, but it was a fun oddness. Like, I'll tell you that and I wouldn't hesitate to do it again. This was such a great adventure. Every time I've fished with George, it's been a ton of fun. We've caught fish and had a heck of a great time, but 
to have George come up here and show him my world of the ice world, ice fishing, it was, it was awesome. Now, after this, I have no idea what we're doing, what we're gonna do, but I know George makes it happen and I'm not gonna ever give him a hint, but I, I'm glad that we did do this and I think he was pretty glad that he did it too because he was laughing a lot. Another fantastic world of saltwater fishing and yes, I could say saltwater because we scored that mahi at the end and you saw it live on TV. If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you could see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.